Welcome everyone to the April 22, 2003 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. A roll call since we're missing a couple people. Uh, Dr. Chapmas. Here. Mr. Guglielmetti is absent. Uh, Mr. Keneally is absent. Mr. LaPlante. Here. Mr. Mendelson. Here. Mr. Tranfaglia is absent. And I am David Backer. And that gives us a quorum of four of our usual complement of seven board members. First item on the agenda is the approval of our minutes of March 25, 2003. And Barbara, again, your usual great job. I only have one very small um, change on page two. On line 22, you refer to meets and bounds, um, and meets um, should be spelled M-E-T-E-S. But other than that, looks great. Any comments on the minutes? Hearing none, could we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Uh, motion, Mr. Mendelson. Second. Seconded. Mr. LaPlante. Comments on the motion? All those in favor? Motion is approved. Minutes are approved. Four in favor, zero opposed. Next item on the agenda is old business. Um, we have none. Next agenda item is new business. The first item is to hear an administrative appeal by Cross Hill LLC of the Code Enforcement Officer's February 4, 2003 decision to withhold certificates, to withhold certificate of occupancies for lots 26 and 27 of tax map U58 and lots 20, 21, and 25 of tax map U59 until after the second floors are finished for use as additional bedrooms. This first came up uh, for hearing at our March 25, 2003 meeting and was continued at the request of Cross Hill until today and I understand we had an additional request by Cross Hill because of the inability of their legal counsel to attend and I understand that they have been informed that the uh, board has granted their request for continuance until our next meeting in May. That's Is that correct. correct? So item Number one under new business is continued to the May meeting, which brings us to the only other item of new business on our agenda, and that is to hear the application of Ann Kilby, 4 City View Road, tax map U03, lot 53, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically as a holistic therapist. And I understand that Ms. Kilby is present by her counsel, Mr. Lurie. That's correct. The podium is yours, and if you'd like to turn that a little bit, that your, yeah. that'd be great. Thank you. Before, before I start and get to the merits of this, am I correct that if you take this up tonight and vote on it, that I would have to get unanimous approval? I thought you needed four votes. Uh, no. Well, it's only but, for a variance. Okay. Okay. It's, it doesn't apply. Okay, fine. Uh, in that case, I will present tonight. I was going to ask you for continuance otherwise. Thank you. Um, Ann Kilby uh, is an old friend of mine. I'm, my name is David Laurie. I'm an attorney, and I reside on Spurwink Avenue in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, Ann Kilby is an old friend of mine, and she's on vacation. She's at the, uh, the school vacation week, as you know, and uh, she's in the Grand Canyon with her daughter and husband. Um, Ann is married to Alan Kilby. They both live at uh, four... Uh, City View and have done for 13 years. He's a urologist who practices in Portland and he regularly goes to work each day. Anne is, an, is a registered nurse, uh, which she's been for about 30 years. And as I said before, they've lived at uh, uh, 
for City View for 13 years. They have three children, two of whom are now grown, one of whom is left, Lisa is left already, and Danny, whom you may hear about and certainly is the subject of the letter writing uh, to date, their son Danny, uh, is currently leaving. Uh, he's shortly going to be moving. Uh, that should be irrelevant to this whole application uh, because the application has nothing to do with the family relationships and, uh, and whether, and David, uh, sorry, and Danny and his friends who sometimes visit late at night, which I think is the source of these communications. Uh, that's the problem that they're alluding to there. In any case, um, they are beginning to become um, empty nesters and they do have more space inside the house because they have one bedroom which is currently unoccupied and there's, they will soon have two. Uh, one of those is on the second floor. It's 10 by 13 feet and 30, 130 square feet and they'd like permission from the board to be able to use that area uh, for a home business. And as I said before, is an RN. Uh, and uh, in recent years, uh, she's got into uh, complementary care or holistic care, which combines traditional Western medicine with Reiki. She's a Reiki master, <coughs> massage therapy, <coughs> that polar polarity therapy, transformational breath facilitation. She did explain that to me, uh, what it was, but I'm afraid that if I tried to repeat it to you, I'd probably get it wrong. Chinese energetics, which is Shaolin, uh, it's a healing art, and uh, direct care nursing. And uh, she does, of those, she does whatever works for her particular clients. Um, she goes out to see her clients uh, on a regular basis, currently. She doesn't work out of the home. You know, she just goes out and she combines that with her regular trips out. So perhaps there would be an increase a very slight increase in traffic if she were to have uh, clients come there because, you know, when she went out normally to the grocery store or whatever, she might also, while she's out, uh, go to visit one of her clients. But she, uh, she's talking about having, she wants to work part-time only, 20 to 30 hours a week maximum. Uh, she has, when she does her client therapy, uh, usually they're two-hour sessions, two-hour appointments. Uh, and uh, she expects to see at most two or three per day, about a dozen a week is what she does now. And uh, it's just more beneficial for her clients to be able to come there. It's very quiet there, you know, it's a dead end street. All the neighbors will tell you it's quiet except perhaps when Danny's around, which I think is their, their issue. Um, and uh, there's adequate parking, there, the driveway holds six vehicles. Uh, condition of approval, no problem with uh, parking and driveway being required. All visitors to park in the driveway. Um, she's, um, as I said before, uh, she's, ex she's willing to accept other conditions of approval. This, no signage is being requested. Um, it, this particular use is completely inoffensive. Uh, it meets all the standards in the ordinance. I'd ask you to approve it. Uh, I'll sit down now unless the board has questions and wait and see what the objections are from the neighbors and then I can address those as they become more clear. Is that satisfactory? Um, it, it is. Okay. Um, I, I do have one question though that I, I'd like you to address uh, now if you would. If we look at the requirements for a home business, you know, one of them under the ordinance, um, I'm looking at the uh, definition of a home business on page seven of our ordinance. It says, the nature of the business or professional use shall not increase vehicular traffic on the street by more than 2% of the current average annual daily traffic. And the, the application states or suggests that the number of vehicle trips per day that the business would generate would be six, anticipating at most three clients 
coming and going. Well, the house apparently, the street apparently has four houses on it, five, three, three, three houses on it. Three, three with driveways, apparently. Um, if we're looking at six vehicle trips, in order for that number not to exceed 2%, I think we'd have to have an existing 300 vehicle trips per day in order to justify having one client come that would generate two vehicle trips per day. I think the ordinance was not thinking of, was not uh, designed for, the, if you know the street, it's... I, I did, I drove by it. Block long. I drove up and, and saw it. Yeah. Um, it. But I think to support three customers, we'd have to have an existing 300 vehicle trips a, a day in order to satisfy the ordinance, even if she only had one customer coming, would have to currently have 100 vehicle trips a day in order to not violate the 2% rule of the ordinance. Yeah, well, as I said before, uh, usual, she goes out now currently to see her clients. Now, uh, sometimes she combines those trips with other things that she, trips she'd make anyway, uh, but frequently they're not. I mean, the number of uh, new trips is probably zero because, you know, how to put it, she would probably go to the grocery store anyway, and now she will go out, you know, and as, as she does frequently, uh, to see a client. And the number of additional trips is probably zero or close to zero because uh, people are coming there, you know, it's question, when somebody comes and then leaves, it's the same number of trips as if she goes out and comes back, okay? So there really isn't any increase except on those few occasions when she might not be going out to the store regularly, you know, anyway, she might not be out regularly and going to her appointment. And what I'm saying is I don't think that there's any, any, any real net increase, and sometimes Yes, sometimes when she's out, she will also, for other reasons, she will also see a client. But that is, I, I suspect the, or I shouldn't say suspect, she's told me that's the exception rather than the rule. Usually she goes out, you know, to meet with her clients, and now they will be coming there. And as I said before, this isn't particularly for her convenience because she thinks that this will be better for the clients. And this will be activity which goes on during the day you know, the objection, you know, when there are very few people there anyway, and there's not, uh, most of the people are out during the day, they're, they're at work. And uh, there won't be any impact at night, which is what some of the, at least one of the comments that you received is, uh, the, you know, one of the conditions of approval should be that it's, you know, between nine and five or some other hours less than that during the day would be acceptable. Uh, but uh, to address your question, uh, we don't think that there's any increase in traffic, and if there is, it's uh, only the occasional time when she would be out anyway and see a client. Usually it would be a balance, you know, it would be a trade-off of her not going out and coming back versus somebody coming there and leaving. So there would be no net increase that way. If, if I understood you correctly just now, you're, you're attempting to trade off trips that the residents would normally make, that the she would the dwelling would normally make, as opposed to clients coming to her home? That she would and normally that's how you're make. balancing off that there's no additional trips being made to the house? Yeah, I mean, she normally would go out, you know, just like I would go to work or I would go out to meet with a client, hmm. um, you know, and that, you know, if a client came to see me, or I went out to see the client, there are no additional trips there. You know, it's, it's really a wash. No, I'm not sure that that's applicable, um, because the applicant states that they expect three customers a day, which is additional six trips being made. But if she would normally go out, as she has been doing... But that's the right of any resident of that dwelling, to come and go as they please. I'm not sure it's a matter of trading off. And there's actually no way to really correlate the reduction of trips on, as a, from a resident of the dwelling 
to the influx of customers coming to the home to be serviced. You say influx, I'm sorry. The applicant, the reason for the application is she wished to, con wished to begin to conduct business from her home. Yep. And it's based on three customers being serviced on a daily basis through the course of a week. That's once again six trips. Uh -huh. And my point is I don't think that you can trade off the trips of a resident of the dwelling and say that's going to be reduced because she's working from home. So you, you, to your point earlier that you're saying that there's a net, no net gain in trips. I don't think that you can make that. Well, the ordinance speaks of increase in vehicle traffic. And because it speaks of increase to vehicle traffic, you take the base, which is what would normally be going on there. And what will normally be going on there is uh, her going out to meet with her clients. And uh, to the extent that uh, that, I'm, I'm saying that won't be an increase. There will be the same number of vehicles there. And you're saying, I think, that you don't discount the fact that she is not going out anymore. But I think that, in fact, uh, you do when you look at it, because you look at whether the activity is going to cause an increase in ve vehicular traffic or not. I'm just not sure it's a quantifiable measurement to be taken. Does she, does she do this on a full-time basis now? No. no. She does it on a part-time basis, and she's going to continue to do it on a part-time basis. And, and when she goes out, um, does, she, does she not, uh, to your knowledge, schedule her, her visitations um, at seriatim? Does she not see one patient or, or client after another? Does she... Or does she just go out and then come back and then go out and come back? She goes out and comes back. She, um, how to put it, uh, this is very um, stressful work for her. I mean, she has to uh, do a lot of physical things in terms of uh, massage therapy, Reiki, and the like. And... Uh, I don't think she would ever schedule two in a row, you know, two at the same time, you know, two in series in the same short time frame. I think uh, she usually does one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Uh, I think it's unlikely that she is going to have ever uh, <coughs> two in a day unless, unless her clients absolutely have to see her, because that's six hours out of a day, and she only wants to work uh, 20 to 30 hours a week. Uh, and uh, if you want to limit the number of patients that she sees during the week, I think that would probably be, if sees there during the week, that would be acceptable. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know that, uh, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. She's not planning on building her business. She already does as much as she wants to do. Her problem is that uh, it isn't always convenient for her clients. They don't always have a quiet place where she can, do her therapy on them, uh, and she has that available now in her home because she has at least one extra bedroom available right now, and uh, it's, she doesn't have any employees. She's just going, you know, she's not planning on building this business. Her husband's a doctor. She doesn't, uh, she doesn't need the money from this activity. It's something that she enjoys doing and helping people. Uh, it's in the nature of a business and therefore comes under the ordinance. But this isn't anything that she wants to do full time, or wants to build uh, any more than she has right now. She has people who come to her because they need help and uh, she wants to help them. And uh, that's all that's going on here. Are you, suggest <clears throat> are you suggesting that if somebody were to call her today, um, or next week for that matter, and say, um, I was referred to you by an existing client, and I'd like to see you um, in your home. She has would, told me. Would, would she say, I'm sorry, I cannot do that. I can only see people in my home who I previously saw outside of my home? And I No, 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 no. That, that wasn't what I was suggesting, that she, I had to put it, uh, uh, a lot of what she does with people, some of it is actually hospice. I, a lot of what she does uh, involves people 
either being cured or dying. Okay, so she does have turnover of clients. I'm not saying she doesn't ever want to have any clients other than the one she has right now. I'm just saying that she doesn't want to work any more hours than she does right now. In fact, she's turned away uh, some people at, because of that. She also turns away people she doesn't think she can help them. Um, the, uh, she doesn't, uh, I'd put it, uh, uh, she views this as a service and uh, she doesn't uh, want to build it to be a business, to be a big business, I should say. She doesn't want to work any more at it than she does currently. She doesn't want to grow it. That's the point I was trying to make. But yes, there are going to be turnovers of her clients. Yes, she's going to have more at some times and less at other times, because depending on who she has and how often they need to be seen. Uh, you know, if they're if they're doing fine, she doesn't have to see them. She isn't going to see them, whether it's there or at some other location. Uh, she only sees them when she thinks that it would be helpful for her to see them, and she only takes on people that she thinks she can help. If you, if you want to get into it more, I suppose you could table it to the next meeting and hear from her directly. Unfortunately, when you scheduled it, she needed this uh, vacation to the Grand Canyon. And we can do this over again at the next meeting if you prefer. Well, why don't we continue on? We do have other people here who I believe would like to speak. And we can come back, Mr. Horry, to and permit you to speak further. Thank you. Would you tell us your name, please, and where you live? Uh, my name is Mark Sikowski. I live at 34th View, uh, directly abutting uh, the Kilby property at 4th City View Road. And I, I'm sorry, would you spell your last name for us, please? Oh, it's the Irish spelling. Uh, it's uh, Z as in zebra, A as in apple, J, K O W S K I. And your address is? Uh, 30 Forest Road. I don't know the lot number on the map. We are uh, directly. Did you, say, did you say forest? Forest. That's right. The back of our yard directly abuts the driveway of the Kilby residence. Um, I would uh, urge the, the Board of Appeals to uh, not grant the variance for a number of reasons. Um, I respectfully disagree with, with uh, Mr. Murray. Uh, I believe some of the, the facts given before may not be complete, you're at, completely accurate. Um, Alan Kilby is a physician, um, and he's a, a good and kind man. Um, it was stated that he comes and goes every day to work. Uh, I see him come and go on average of twice a week. Um, this is a home uh, that I believe that even in the strictest of ordinance may not apply here, but I think in the frame of reference for what uh, the neighborhood has had to deal with, with the goings on of this house since I've lived there for four years, uh, do place an unburden on the neighborhood, especially when considering adding traffic and parking issues. Um, this is a house that uh, has had several complaints filed against it from traffic at all hours of the night. The house has several cars parked at it during the day and in the evening um, in the driveway and in their yard and directly uh, in, the, in front of my property on several occasions that essentially makes my home look like a used car lot. There have been a number of instances of the Stenberg property having difficulty getting in and out of their driveway when uh, Chris Stenberg had to make a trip to the hospital or his wife had to go pick him up from the hospital. Uh, the Kellys who live directly across from them on City View also have had several problems coming and going. Unfortunately, they're on vacation with their children. I have pictures that I took just last week. This was a particularly good week as far as the limiting number of cars that were parked um, in front of the Kilby home. And I'll show them to you and I'll pass them around. For reference, this was taken from the upstairs corner of my home. You can see the fence that we had to construct so we didn't have to see the goings on during the day and at night of the Kilby house. Also notice the children's swing set, which is no more than 10 feet from that driveway and directly next to where people have been parking constantly for a number of years. This shows the Kilby driveway with Ann Kilby's minivan and another car in front of their house. This is not my vehicle. This is another vehicle that was at the Kilby house when this was taken last week. And I'll pass this one around. You <clears throat> you do realize that this becomes part of our That's fine. Record. They're, they're for you. 
This is a picture from my backyard showing these same two vehicles, one of which is parked within 15 or 20 feet of my child's play set. And I believe this photograph, um, that pho the first photograph does illustrate the different cars uh, in the different driveways that are in question that were mentioned by Mr. Murray earlier. This is a view from my screen porch of another day of two cars. Um, be before you go any further, as these get passed around, I'd like to mark them somehow sure. so we can identify which of these we're referring to on the back of this first one. Mm -hmm. um, that's from my second. I, I'd story. like to write your name and oh, sure. just number one, if I may. That's fine. Um, Are the photos also dated? Uh, they were taken last week. Um, they were taken on a digital camera. I can pull the card and bring it in if you'd like to see it. And the pronunciation of your last name is? Zakowski. Zakowski. So I've marked this Zakowski number one, and it's right. the picture that you took from your upstairs Right. Window. I think that's the most telling photograph because you can see the three driveways on City View in the same view. And this uh, next picture with the tree in the middle that and the uh, black Jeep in the street, I'm going to mark uh, Zakowski number two. Okay. This final photograph we'll call number three is from my screen porch, which shows City View and the Kelly home directly across from the Kilby home with cars that are parked again in front of my yard visiting the Kilby house. We can label that Zakowski number three. I will. It was mentioned um, earlier that there are very few people at these homes during the day and it would have a minimal impact. I would respectfully disagree to that as well. Um, several of the families in the neighborhood have wives who do not work and there are scores of young children in that neighborhood who often um, go up and down the hills and who travel and play together, uh, many of which play on our children's swing sets. Um, uh, for that reason alone, uh, I think it's an unfair burden on our neighborhood to have to deal with extra traffic coming and going um, with our children playing less than 10 feet away. Uh, we've tried to make reasonable accommodations. We've put up a fence. Uh, we've had to deal with several things during daylight hours uh, with the other Kilby children. Uh, we've tried to be good neighbors. Um, quite honestly, there's no one in this neighborhood who supports this. Um, the direct abutters, myself, uh, the Stenbergs, who I believe you've re received an email from. Rich Henry, I've not been able to contact uh, directly to put something in writing. Rich Henry, Henry lives in the corner of, of Ocean View. He is the, the largest direct abutter of their backyard. Um, I know he's also not in favor of it, but I cannot speak for him. Uh, the Polishas, who are directly across Ocean View Road, are also not in favor of this because the, the cars tend to park along Ocean View, along that border of the Kilby property as well. Uh, Lori Humans, who I believe sent a letter to the council, also took some digital photographs that you can keep that she has labeled with photos of her vehicle showing how the street is narrow with cars parked along City View and showing that it would make it extremely difficult for vehicle access in case of an emergency, especially um, during snow season. I have circulated a petition to the neighborhood. I have signed it by as many people who were home. It's been a difficult two weeks with people traveling, and this is also <clears throat> that you may keep it. There is not a single person in our neighborhood who is in favor of this going through. Um, some of the guidelines that I saw in the ordinances did notice that uh, the zoning board shall consider if it poses a fire hazard, safety hazard, which I believe it does clearly, and I believe it also eliminates privacy of the adjoining properties. Uh, especially with my children playing in the yard and cars parking along my yard and walking through my yard to get to the Kilby's driveway. Um, you know, there are many working uh, moms who, who are at home who are not working. There are a lot of children in the neighborhood. It is a busy neighborhood during the day. We already have traffic problems as it is with cars speeding through on forest and mountain and, uh, and ocean view. We already have parking problems with vehicles from for City View Road as it is that we can do nothing about. Uh, I, I beg you not to make it worse. I think it's an unfair burden on the neighborhood and I would urge you to, to consider uh, not letting this variance pass. <clears throat> Don't go anywhere.
I've, um, I've labeled this double photograph um, as Zukowski number four on the back. Setting aside for a moment the, um, the width of the streets, um, you've indicated that there's a lot of traffic through the course of a day. Well, you've also you've indicated daytime as well as nighttime, but specifically in the day. What, do you, have you been able to draw any conclusion as to what the nature of all that traffic is? Um, the comings and goings from four, from four City View, the house in question, um, the trips during the day when the parents are not home, which is almost always, are innumerable. Um, it mainly involves the middle child, Dan. Um, I, I choose not to speculate on the nature of the comings and goings, especially those that happen after midnight on a regular basis from that house. Um, I, I can't say what every vehicle that comes and goes is coming and going for. Uh, certainly there are a number of normal daytime deliveries, oil vehicles and whatnot, normal residential traffic. Um, we do have a small problem with speeding on Forest Road as it is. Uh, where we happen to live on 30 Forest Road is near the bottom uh, of a hill where cars often come down a blind hill at a fairly decent rate of speed. Uh, we've had to contact authorities on, on at least one occasion recently to ask cars to slow down. Um, I don't see any way that having a home business is going to make that any better with what already is a difficult situation. Our home has two children that are uh, under four. Um, the Kellys have two children ages six and four. Uh, the Stenbergs have two children. The Polishes have three children under six. Uh, this is not a neighborhood of adults and empty nesters. This is a neighborhood of young people, and the reason we moved to the neighborhood with the dead end street is so we could avoid things just like this. Other questions for Mr. <clears throat> Zakowski? In your photo number three, this shows city view, is, it, is that correct? Yes, sir. These two match, this one has a that is from my work at City View. City View. Property would be to this side. Photos one and two show same, time. same vehicles. Uh, photo three shows two different vehicles. What is your impression? Are these known vehicles to you? Or these would these are not known vehicles to me. None of these four vehicles are known to you? No. What is your impression of these visitors? They're clearly visitors to the Kilby House. Visitors, now. customers, is there any way you would know? I have no way of knowing. Mr. Horry, would you um, like the opportunity to ask Mr. Zakowski any questions? Yeah. Um, did you, in particular... And, and, it, and I, I think that, um, Mr. Horry, you're going to need to stand at the microphone. Is the other microphone on? There, the one that's hanging from overhead. Yep. Well, Mr. Zakowski, if you wouldn't mind maybe sure. just standing over under that, you don't need to speak up into it. Sure. I think if you simply sure. address us and, and answer any questions that Mr. Lurie might have, that'll be sufficient. Sure. And Mr. Lurie, if you wouldn't mind returning to the podium for any questions that you might have. These vehicles, did you see people get out of these vehicles and go to the Kilby house? Those were taken by Laura Yeomans. That's her vehicle and that's my wife's vehicle in front of it. These oh. vehicles that I, oh. pictures I took are not our vehicles, are not our neighbor's vehicles. Oh, I'm sorry. So these are not Kilby vehicles here? No, not this picture. These pictures are vehicles okay. oh. visiting the Kilby house. All right. So. That, I believe Laura Yeomans took those to illustrate uh, the width that would be available for emergency vehicles. This is Zakowski number four that we're talking about, and these are not vehicles visiting the Kilby House. These are just here to demonstrate the width of the road or something. As they're marked, exactly.
these other pictures were taken on the same day, Zakowski one, two, and three, were taken the same day, or? No, again, okay. these pictures with the same vehicles were taken the same day. Okay, one, one and two were taken the These same were day. taken a different day. Did you see this pickup truck being loaded? No. no. I took the picture and went back in the house. Did you see anybody go from these vehicles to the Kilby house? Uh, no, but the Kellys were not home, nor were the Stenbergs, and I know they weren't our vehicles, so that's the only home they could have been visiting. Okay. So you assume that they were visiting the Kilbys based on that? Well, they clearly were. I don't have any more questions for you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Laurie. Thank you, Mr. Zakowski. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else here who is here to speak either in favor of or in opposition to the application? Yeah, well, Mr. Laurie, we do have, and I should, should read these. Um, we do have a letter um, that was sent to the zoning board dated April 18 from Tim and Laurie. Is it? Yeomans, is that the correct pronunciation? Yeomans. Um, it says, dear board members, as extremely close visual abutters of the Kirby's, we oppose their application for a permit for a holistic therapy business in their home. There are many families with small children in our neighborhood who ride bikes, walk, and play in the street. There are no sidewalks in our neighborhood, and the Kilby Street is a dead end. There are already too many cars visiting the Kilby's house 24 hours a day. The increased traffic that this new business would bring will only exacerbate the excessive traffic that the Kilbys already have at their house, further endangering kids in the neighborhood. Also in the winter and summer, customers visiting her business will have to park in the street, blocking piles and emergency vehicles, especially given that the Kilbys' driveway is at the end of a dead-end street with no turnaround circle, and the driveway is usually full of cars. Please reject this application. Sincerely, Tim and Lori Yeomans. And we received... Um, the board was uh, given today a copy of an email that was sent to the code enforcement officer um, that says, I'm writing to express my concerns regarding a variance for Mrs. A. Kilby to operate a business from her home on City View Road. First, let me state that it is not the business that is of concern, <laughs> but rather the traffic congestion that it could cause. City View Road is a small and narrow cul-de-sac onto which five properties abut with three having driveways. The three houses, I think they mean that use the street, already cause heavy usage with currently seven vehicles owned by the occupants. Being families, these vehicles are in and out of their respective driveways frequently with probably over 50 in and out trips on any standard weekday. Added to this are frequent visitors to the homes, including friends, cleaners, and tradespeople. With more than one car parked on the street, it becomes virtually impossible to enter either our driveway or that of other neighbors, the Kellys. In winter, the accessibility is further hampered and it is impossible to get up in the street if a vehicle is parked on it, necessitating asking the Kilbys to move their vehicles to allow access to the other driveways. And it's signed Christopher Stenberg, 57 Ocean View Road. Okay, briefly. Um, as I said before, Danny, who was the middle child, as Mr. Zakowski put it, uh, is leaving, and uh, that will hopefully uh, alleviate the uh, problems that the neighborhood perceives as to what's going on there. Uh, that is wholly irrelevant to what's going on here. Uh, if the board wants to make that he not be a resident of the home so long as the home business is operated there, uh, I can talk to the client and see whether that would be acceptable or not, but uh, it should be irrelevant to the decision of the board, uh, you know, because that's just a normal thing that happens. Some people um, have uh, friends who uh, come to visit who are not, uh, how to put it, uh, 
not uh, an, a welcome addition to the neighborhood. Uh, and How old is middle son Danny? 20. 20. And he's go supposed to be going to live in Mid Coast, Maine. That's the plan. He's, he, in fact, was packing last week. That was why that truck was there. The truck, I mean, I assume it was that truck. I was told that a pickup truck was being used, you know, uh, to take his stuff, and that he was being packed up last week. Um, that's what Ann told me, anyway. And uh, the, the question really isn't whether the home business is going to make the activity in the past at this home any better. The question is, will it make it any worse? That's what the ordinance is about. It talks about increases in traffic or increases or, or parking problems created by the use that's being proposed here. Uh, what has gone on in the past with Danny is really pretty much irrelevant, but as I said before, I suspect that uh, the uh, uh, Kilbys would accept a condition that they can only have this use there so long as uh, Danny is not a resident of the home because you know, that appears to be the conflict that the neighborhood is concerned about, that in fact uh, there's too much going on there because of what Danny is doing uh, or whatever. Um, the, it's, it's sort of a bitter pill to swallow, but I think that uh, Anne would probably be willing to accept that as a condition if you want to impose as a condition. And if not, we'll come back here and see uh, if we can do anything about that afterwards. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think that would address the neighborhood concern uh, if, if that's the direction you want to go in. Uh, in fact, uh, under the ordinance, other than the question of the 2% and how you figure that 2%, um, I, I think the drafters of the ordinance probably didn't have this kind of street in mind. They might have had Forest, Forest Street, perhaps, in, in mind. Uh, I suppose you could do a traffic study. You know, if, if the board wants, we can do a traffic study and we can uh, have people calculate the number of trips that are regularly made uh, from the home. I think they're going to go down significantly since Danny is leaving, uh, but uh, or has left by now, but, uh, uh, you know, that that will actually work against them. <laughs> you know, if you believe the stories from the neighbors, you know, there are hundreds of cars going there, and going back and forth from there and parking on the streets all, at all hours of the day, uh, and not just on this street, on the street above as well. Um, but uh, I think that if you think about the purposes of the ordinance and you think about the activity which is being proposed here, uh, you have uh, sick people who are coming there to be healed, uh, to receive therapy, and uh, they're going to do that probably once a day, maybe two or three a day at most. On a bad day, it would be three, but that would be the odd occasion. Usually, it's going to be one, maybe two on a normal day, and, uh, you know, I, I just don't think that uh, the impact on the neighborhood of this particular use uh, is significant. You know, all you've heard about today is other things that have gone on in the neighborhood. The pictures uh, aren't helpful, to be candid. Uh, they're not helpful. Uh, they, they may be are helpful in terms of your seeing the street, the layout of the street. Uh, but beyond that, they really aren't helpful. Um, and a condition of approval certainly should be that uh, all visitors to the Kilby home, and indeed you could even require the Kilby vehicles be kept in their own driveway, uh, that again would be acceptable. They have a large driveway, holds six cars, no reason why uh, they should be parking on the street other than when they have a party like somebody, like everybody else has at their home at some point in time, I should say. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you can write a requirement which is broader than the particular use and put in some except. If you do, you have to put in some exceptions, like uh, other than when they're entertaining 
uh, you're having a function or something. Uh, but normally, uh, a six uh, vehicle, a six car um, driveway ought to be adequate to handle normal traffic, their own home needs. Certainly when their two older children are gone, those are two cars that are gone from there, uh, plus all of his friends, apparently. I don't know what to say beyond that. Uh, you know, we're willing to work with the board on any conditions. As I said before, some of them might be bitter pills to swallow, but we're willing to consider any conditions that the board wants to impose. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Mr. Laurie. Further questions for Mr. Laurie before he takes a seat? None? Uh, Mr. Zakowski will give you one final comment if you'd like to make one. Sure. Um, I, I, um, I appreciate uh, the gentleman's comments um, and the, the, the statement that it is not an unacceptable, it's not an, it's not an unacceptable increase. Um, I would submit that if you lived on the corner where we lived, it, it absolutely is because we have to look at it on a daily basis. Also, there's no guarantee that this middle son will move. Uh, to my knowledge, this son has never held a job. Um, in addition, there is absolutely no shortage of commercial space in South Portland or Portland that is available for things exactly like this. And especially with the statement that she does not need to do this for financial reasons, as her husband is a physician, only underscores the fact there's no need to have this in a neighborhood. Thank you. I have a question sure. regarding this petition against approval of the Holistic Center. Who originated this petition? I did. You did. Uh, notably absent from this petition was number 32 Forest, which is on the corner opposite of you, and number one That's City not. View, which is opposite Ms. Kilby. Could you explain your the, your impression as to why these two addresses did not sign? Yes, yeah, I appreciate the question. Uh, the person at 32 Forest is Don Williams, who is 97 and a seasonal resident. Uh, Don is in ill health and just returned from Florida. Uh, I've not been able to contact him. Um, he does not live there now? He's there seasonally. He just seasonally. moved back this week. Just moved back. And that was 32 Forest? 32 Forest. Uh, the folks at One City View, the Kellys, have been gone on vacation. Say again. The Say Kellys, again. who are directly across on One City View, are on vacation and they are not available. Okay. Are they aware of this? They were not aware of it before they left. And it's not fair for me to say that they would be in favor of the petition or against because I have not spoken to them directly. But I can say that in our past conversations, they have shared the same concerns as they have with the Stenberg family, who is directly next to them. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Krasny, those concerns were not about this particular proposal, though, were they? They were concerns about the traffic uh, particularly Danny Kilby's traffic at the home, is that correct? Uh, the concerns were about the traffic in the home. Um, there have never been even four cars parked in the driveway at once. Uh, I don't think we would ever see six. Um, and there have been occasions when the Kellys have not been able to get out of their driveway, and as have the Stenbergs. Whether that's Danny's traffic or not, I believe is irrelevant. I don't see how it would we get any better. And if Dan's car is removed, if in fact he moves to Midcoast, Maine, which we have no assurances that he would, or move back after a variance is granted, that would leave the number of permanent cars on that street from seven to six. So if we have three new clients a day, that increases the number of cars parking there by 50% from six to nine, which I believe is an unacceptable increase. <clears throat> Mr. Zakowski is actually around the corner. His access is around the corner on Forest. I just want to make sure that everybody understands. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laurie. And did you wish to speak for or against this application? I simply want to ask before we cut off public sure. comment. Uh, my name is Peter Anderson. I'm a resident at 45 Forest Road. I've been there for about 14 years. Um, I would register my disapproval for granting this variance. Uh, I'd actually be on that petition. My wife is, but I was not home at the time when Mark came by. Um, what I would uh, encourage the uh, board to take into consideration is the 
unique physical characteristic of this neighborhood. Uh, Mountain View Park was constructed beginning at the turn of the century and is very unusual in terms of the scale of the streets, um, uh, distances between houses compared to typical subdivisions today. Um, so in crafting an ordinance, obviously, you can't cover every situation, so variances become applicable in those situations. However, in order to, I would uh, recommend that in order to consider granting this, you seriously consider the disparities um, of scale between a neighborhood like Mountain View Park and a newer one, say, such as Cross Hill. Uh, the streets, as you can possibly make out in photographs, I know some of you may have gone and taken a drive by, a fairly nar narrow, curvilinear, um, lots of vegetation uh, which uh, inhibits sight lines between houses. Um, as Mark pointed out from the photos he's taken from his house, you can see many of the houses in the neighborhood are less than 20 feet from each other in many instances. Um, not, I mean, that's the same or even less than some of the side lot setbacks on one lot in current uh, subdivisions. Um, so whether or not you're around the corner or just across the street, uh, the situation is, I think, um, legitimate in terms of concerns about impact of use of additional vehicular traffic. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that for, from uh, the standpoint of uh, the neighbors. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. You're welcome. That will conclude the public comment portion of the hearing and we'll open it for board discussion. Um, the relevant sections of the ordinance you'll find on page uh, 54 of the ordinance is the portion of section 19-5-5 dealing with conditional use permits. Um, paragraph D lays out the standards for conditional use approval, and there are six of them. Um, and paragraph E then goes on to list possible conditions for approval, although there can be others. And then on page seven of the ordinance is the definition of home business, which, which has uh, six, actually seven, enumerated elements. My concerns before we get into the various elements by vote would be the two specifically, one under the standards for conditional use approval. Um, item number two requires that the board find that the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. And as I already pointed out, under the definition of home business, item number two requires that the nature of the business or professional use shall not increase vehicular traffic on the street by more than 2% of the current average annual daily traffic. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Chapman. Comments that I have <clears throat> on the Ms. Kelby's application, one of the questions of the application for home business as as has been brought up number of vehicle trips per day that the home business will generate she answers six and that defines that as one customer visit uh, equals two trips so that she declares that there is a potential for three customers visits per day or six customer trips per day in mr laurie's statement he estimated two to three customers per day. And then he concluded hit that portion of his statement uh, using the term about a dozen per week. Uh, a dozen, 12, uh, that would 
roughly, that would come to 2.4 visits customers per day, which is two and a half, uh, 4.8 trips per day. Using your opening statement, so which uh, Mr. Lorry's estimate was somewhat less than Ms. Kilby. She said six per day, uh, taking Mr. Lorry's of a dozen per week, that's 4.8 trips per day. Your opening statement said to for her declared six trips per day, not to exceed 2% increase in traffic, that would have to be 300 uh, trips per day, or 300 passes per day, and that would, you were correct in saying that. If we use a lower standard that Mr. Lorry of 4.8, then we're still talking about 240 vehicle passes per day. There are only three driveways on City View from uh, observation, um, and if you take two, <coughs> excuse me, 240 divide by three, that's 80 per household, or 40 round trips. And if you carry these numbers forward, that's five trips per hour, every hour for every house, eight hours a day. Uh, so however you look at this, it still seems to exceed 2%. And ends up being nowhere close to 2% in my uh, estimation. Uh, since there are three, City View appears to be uh, about 160 feet long street with three driveways. So I can only imagine that there's no extraneous traffic on City View. It's purely destinational traffic, uh, meaning that there, I, it's highly unlikely there'd be any bypass traffic. Someone's either going to one of those three driveways or one of those three houses that the driveway opens on to City View, or they would not be turning on to City View. All of these lead me to believe that the traffic estimates that Ms. Kilby and her representative uh, uh, give to us exceed the 2%. Uh, the definition of a home business, after it describes it, the final statement said, a home business shall comply with all of the following criteria, and the word all is underlined. Uh, number two, as has been referenced several times before at this meeting, that there shall not be an increased vehicular traffic of more than 2%. Uh, a home business shall comply with all of the following criteria criteria. Uh, I don't see any, in my mind, any way of justifying the fact that 4.8 or 6 vehicular trips per day will come anywhere close to not exceeding 2 percent traffic increase on this street. Uh, based on the simple reading of the ordinance, I, I don't see how this application can, can pass because it simply does not comply with all of the following criteria in specific number two. I myself had reached the same conclusion. Mr. Mendelson? I, 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 I would echo that sentiment. I don't, I don't see any possible way that that uh, uh, they can uh, comply with with uh, section two of, of the uh, definitional uh, paragraph of a home business. Well, it sounds like um, we're unanimous in the way the vote is going to go. Um, but let's go through uh, the criteria um, and vote on them and then we'll have a vote on the application as a whole. So first, um, let's start with the definition of home business. Um, 
And all those who find, it, can I just have a showing of hands of uh, formally, all those who find that um, that the proposed home business of Ms. Kilby uh, does satisfy uh, criteria number two, which is that the nature of the business or professional use shall not increase vehicular traffic on the street by more than 2% of the current average annual daily traffic. I see no hands. Those who find that that criteria has not been met. So we have a finding of zero in favor and four opposed to uh, a finding that that criteria has been met. Um, now let's go over to uh, page 54, the standards for conditional use approval. I don't think we need to discuss conditions, um, but um, by a show of hands, uh, the, those board members who find that the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. And those who find that that criteria has not been satisfied, and that is found um, in the negative by a vote of zero in favor um, or opposed to the finding. Um, not having heard comments on any of the others, I don't think it's necessary to go through all of those and vote um, on individual findings. If I could have a motion from someone, um, and the motion is going to be in the affirmative, um, but a motion to approve the request of Ann Kilby for City View Road, tax map U03, lot 53, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically as a holistic therapy at the property, well, I already, I'm sorry, I already stated it, for City View Road. So could I have a motion to approve the application? We need to have the motion in the affirmative with a second. Motion so moved. Okay, a motion by Mr. LaPlante and a second. We need a second by somebody. I'll second. And a second by Mr. Anderson. Um, all those in favor of the motion as presented, all those opposed, the motion fails by a vote of zero in favor, uh, four opposed, and the application is denied. And that concludes our new business. Next item on the agenda is communications. I am not aware of any. Bruce, do we have any? No. Can we have a motion for adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Mr. Mendelson motions. Second, Mr. LaPlante. All those in favor, we are adjourned.